Hello everyone, Trophy One Hunter. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm really excited to do a tasting of two Barolo wines from the same winery. So on this side I have the San Silvestro 2017 Barolo, Serra del Terci. And then on this end, which is my right side, is the 2018 uh, Padres. Gotta be honest, Barolo and Italian wines is not my comfort zone. I enjoy Barolo like most people. I enjoy Italian wines, but um, don't have the experience that I do with Bordeaux and Burgundy wines. So I'm a little bit more like a beginner in Barolo. And again, hopefully we can learn together, but um, let's go through some basics about Barolo and this winery. So first the thing, I guess Barolo, obviously a region in um, the Piedmont region in Italy and all the um, grapes are used there are 100% Nebbiolo. Nebbiolo is kind of called the king of grapes. Um, it's kind of very attractive to people that don't like a drier style, so don't like this fruit forward. It's very much tannic and it's very bold, but it's got a lot of um, kind of savory elements and not as much fruitiness. So some people will enjoy that. Um, the color is usually a little bit more, um, not as bright red um, as you know, you'd see in some other wines. So it's more traditional style. So the other things I learned about um, Barolo is that there are 11 villages of Barolo and they're inside those villages, there are these crew vineyards and there's about 181 of them. So it's very similar in terms of the makeup to Burgundy with all these crew vineyards. Um, it, Burgundy has a lot more regions and or villages, um, but you know, that kind of makes it a little bit easier to understand. With basic Barolo, the nice thing also, it normally has to be aged 38 months uh, before release. And so probably because it's pretty tannic upon release, so um, you won't see you know, probably you'll see 2018, 2019, you won't see 2022 Barolo because it hasn't been aged enough. And the other thing I didn't understand about Barolo is that it must be uh, between the altitudes of 170 and 540 meters. Um, and that's because if it's too low or it's too high, uh, the ripeness of the grape won't be very good. And the other neat thing that I discovered with Barolo is that um, there are certain regions on the vineyard where the snow melts first and you have the most sunshine. And those vineyards are given the title of Sori or Brico. And I see that a lot, but generally speaking, and again, this is huge generalizations, but you wanna see Brico or Sori and in the title of the vineyard, and um, generally speaking, those will be better quality or um, higher value Barolos. Let's talk a little bit about the winery San Silvestro. It was established in 1871 by Giovanni Sartorano and is now owned and operated by the fourth generation, which is Paolo and Guido Sartorano. The name comes from the original vineyard and in um, 2006, they moved the headquarters to Novello which is in the Lamora region. And the Lamora region is a good region um, to kind of enter drinking for Barolo. Um, it's known like a little bit softer on the softer side in terms of the tannins. It's a very large region, so it's kind of nice that you can um, get wines from there if you're kind of beginning your journey in Barolo like me. And these wines, San Silvestro, I think around 40 or $50. So they're not really that expensive Barolos and good quality. So it's um, a kind of nice place to en enter into the Barolo world. And Barolo, like many Italian wines, are fairly affordable, even with um, quite good quality. Of course, you can get very expensive Barolos, but um, it's, it is uh, a little bit easier entry point than let's say a region like Burgundy. They are a Piedmont producer, but they only, only about 20% of their wines are Barolo wines. They produce a lot of other types of wines in the Piedmont region. 
and about 88% of their wines are exported. Both these wines are aged classically for 38 months, 18 months in Slavonian oak. Let's talk a little bit about each of these wines. So if uh, the San Silvestro uh, Serra de Turchi is a single or vineyard winery. So it's one of these crew, one of these 181 crew um, level vineyards in Barolo. It is in the La Mora region and um, it's about 230 meters in altitude. It's not the top end quality, but you know, it's not at the bottom either. So about 230 kind of would be a mid priced uh, Barolo. We turn over to the 2018 Patres, which is going to be a selection of um, wine or grapes from the 11 villages in the Barolo district. So um, San Silvestro as a producer, they're like many Piedmont producers. So they have their own vineyards. They have about seven hectares of their own vineyards and they work with about 40 growers that they have a, a long-term contract with to have their grapes. So if I were to, before we taste this, um, if I were to say which was a better vintage, probably I would say the 2018 in Barolo would be a little bit better than 2017. Uh, the 15 and 16 vintages were great. Um, so, but um, again, let's see if there will be a difference in terms of the taste. So let's look at the bottles and one comment about the corks, which are the same for both bottles. Um, they're the springiest corks I've seen in a long time. They almost look like champagne corks, but good for them because nothing's getting in there uh, for the first couple of years for sure. So let's go to the first bottle, which is the Serra de Turchi, which is the Cru Vineyard in La Mora. And, um, this is the 2017, and you can see it's 15% alcohol. And then this is the Padres, which is 2018, which is a blend of grapes from the um, 11 villages in um, Barolo. And if you look at both wines, although it looks like maybe the Padres is darker, I think it's more just lighting, but uh, you'll see both of them look a little bit almost brick uh, red, uh, but that's the color of Nebbiolo. That's not aging. That's generally, it's a little bit uh, more duller red than um, you'd expect with other wines like Napa or Bordeaux. So let's taste the wines and I will let you know, we have had them open for quite a while. I had them um, probably in the afternoon. Now it's nighttime. I put them in the fridge and then took them out after dinner again. So um, they've been well aired at this point. Um, we did not decant them originally when we um, drank them. So let's go to the um, Serra de Turchi first, which is the single vineyard crew um, wine from Barolo. So on the aroma, you can smell the alcohol content. It's 15%. Um, but you smell some chalkiness, some violets, um, some clay and some earthiness. It's really um, quite floral in terms of the aroma, um, but also earthy and maybe a little spice on the nose, like a little bit of pepper at the end here. Mm. So I get Black cherries, lots of tannins still. I was gonna say the tannins weren't that, um, that were tomed down. No, they're pretty high still. It's probably not a great idea to drink young Barolo. Um, so this needs time. But um, lots of fruit actually. Um, I get some earthiness and some kind of leaf, almost tobacco leaf notes. Um, but a lot of alcohol and a lot of um, intensity of flavor. Almost hits you like an Amarone. Of course, not as sweet as an Amarone, but just the intensity of flavor. Um, I think it's really young, but um, I like it. 
there's a little, why it's took the second taste, there was a little bit of aftertaste, a little bit of bitterness in the aftertaste, which I didn't quite like on the first taste. Um, it's calming down a little bit, almost like a little bit of almondiness to it. Um, but good wine, but really potent. Um, right now it's young. Um, so just initially, let, let, let me taste the other one. I don't want to give a score yet. So let's go to the San Silvestro de Patras, which is the um, kind of blend. You can call this single vineyard and you can call this a blend. So this is much um, softer. You don't have that intensity of aromas. You, it's, and in fact, the, the alcohol content is 14% here. So much softer wine. Um, a bit of floral uh, elements. It's fragrant, but not the same intensity. Much more um, toned down, if you will. Yeah, of course, a similar taste profile as they're both from Burrillo. Um, I would say this one, the tannins are not as high and the alcohol content. And so you can taste the flavors a little bit more. It's interesting because you think the 18 is a little bit um, younger vintage. It's a better vintage, so it'll be more um, youthful. But in fact, I think this is more ready to drink than the uh, Sarah de Terci. So um, both of them are very similar. I both I like both wines. Right now, because they're really both quite young, I'm going to say they're both 89 points. I tasted with a number of people and everyone had the same impression. This was a softer wine and this was a more uh, intense wine. But it also kind of went down the lines of who likes what type of wines. For people that like a little bit more bolder wines, they all like this wine. For people that like softer wines, they like this wine. So they're very, it's a really interesting comparison. I wouldn't say one is better than the other. It's just they're different. Uh, my palate, I generally like a little bit softer wine. So right now for me, I prefer this wine. But it was kind of split half and half between my friends who drank. Some people like bolder wines and say like they really like this wine. Some people like a little bit softer wines and they like this one. So both of them are wonderful examples. They are both young. Both of them have the components that everyone loves about Barolo, which is that earthiness, that little bit of clay or gravel kind of um, uh, texture, um, um, a lot of kind of floral elements and particularly violets. And um, a good intensity of flavor, lots of alcohol, lots of intensity and uh, flavor, um, lot high tannins. So uh, really both quite beautiful wines. And for the price, I think they're quite good. Again, I think I had them around $50 a piece. Um, really great wines. I don't think many people would not enjoy these wines. Let's put it that way. If I served them to 10 people, I would say a majority, like eight out of 10 would think they are quite good wine. So that's the great thing about Barolo. I think it's um, generally speaking, I don't see a lot of terribly made Barolos. Um, generally speaking, if you're serving a Barolo, people are impressed with it. They like the name Barolo. It's Italian. Uh, they think it's, you know, high quality and um, generally people quite enjoy Barolos. Um, and that's just my common experience. Hope you've enjoyed this tasting. Until next time, happy drinking.